Hello YouTube and welcome to another video. Uh, in this video I'm just kind of going to talk about where I'm at and uh, what I'm planning to do next maybe. Uh, so I've finished my power walls properly um, that you can see behind. Um, the um, uh, e-bike BMS finally arrived uh, for the correct current flow that I want so uh, I've now fitted the correct e-bike BMS for this pack on the wall here and also for um, this wall mounted one here as well now so everything is uh, now complete uh, in the power shed as it should be uh, so there's not really any more work uh, to do on any of this in here now. So I'm trying to decide uh, where to where to focus my attentions next. So we've been trying to um, figure out a way in the house of um, uh, getting off gas completely. Uh, ideally, we would like to get the the gas cut off to the house. So the, we use only electric. Uh, at the moment, we have a, a, a gas hob on the top of our um, uh, oven, um, which um, we don't use very much. Um, but uh, we do still use it occasionally. Um, most of most of the time, when we cook, we use um, we use like a multi-level steamer. Um, saucepan type arrangement which we used to use on the gas hob but now um, we've bought a, an electric one of those just plugs into a wall socket so we do most of our cooking of vegetables and stuff using that so we only really use the gas hob now for uh, things like a frying pan or uh, some, something of that sort um, but so yeah ideally we'd like to swap that out entirely um, and get uh, an electric hob. Um, so that's something we're thinking about. Unfortunately when we bought the house the, the double oven is like a range cooker type arrangement that was in the house when we bought the house and um, to replace it with a new uh, exactly the same size unit but with an electric hob uh, is not cheap uh, and it does kind of make you question whether or not uh, financially it makes sense to do it but environmentally it obviously does make sense to do it because you know we've got to stop burning stuff uh, so it's something we're looking at and uh, yeah we're hoping to, to maybe be able to swap that out but then that still leaves the central heating system which is off all through the summer so we only we only use that uh, through the winter months and we've been heating the hot water using the double immersion system uh, and the solar uh, and in the winter we could continue to do that but just using um, uh, the grid using cheap rate nighttime electricity to heat the hot water that way so that we don't have to burn any gas for that so really it's just the central heating system uh, I've been doing some research and um, really we've got three options as I see it we can either try and go for uh, an air source heat pump or a ground source heat pump or we can just basically remove all the um, uh, gas-fired radiators in the house and replace them all with um, intelligent electric radiators. So the air source heat pump is the one that a lot of people are going for. Um, I'm a bit concerned that it won't be powerful enough to keep our house warm. Um, even using the gas boiler, uh, the kitchen area of our house is a bit drafty um, and, and yeah, even in, in the winter months even with the gas boiler and the biggest radiator we could find which we've currently got on the wall it still only just keeps that area warm so I'm concerned that with a, an air source a heat pump that can only heat the water to about 45 or 50 degrees it just won't be enough to keep the house warm um, 
without us putting loads of insulation under the suspended floor, which is just just not really an option. We'd have to literally rip the entire uh, downstairs uh, floor up, including ripping out all the kitchen and so that we could get to it and all the front room floor and everything. It's just just a massive undertaking, and I, I just can't see it uh, ever being worth doing that. So. I need to get some people out to come and give us a quote for uh, air source heat pump and, and get their perspectives on whether they think it would actually work in our situation. The other thing um, I've heard about them from a colleague at work who's got one is that uh, the fan can be a bit noisy because it's basically droning away 24-7. I don't think it would bother me too much but uh, it might bother my wife and it might bother our neighbours. Um, so I'm not sure on that front either. Um, the other option of course is a ground source heat pump. Um, we don't really have a huge amount of land that we could put the coils of wire uh, tubing into to you know to pull the heat out of the ground so we probably have to get one of those really deep boreholes done um, which um, could go under the driveway for example so I don't think that would be particularly a problem but um, Again, um, it's it's uh, whether or not it would generate enough heat to warm the house as it stands, um, or whether it just just would never really work. And again, uh, I think they're more expensive, um, but they are quieter. So uh, again, I need to get someone to come and give me a quote on that as well, and 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 explain to me whether or not um, that would really be an option for us too. And the third option, like I say, would be just to get uh, electric rads uh, and just basically take all the old radiators off the wall and just replace them with electric rads. Um, that's by far the cheapest option in terms of uh, upfront cost. It's also the simplest option, but obviously it's going to be far more expensive to run them um, because um, you're not getting that benefit of... Um, uh, energy efficiency that you get with heat pumps so uh, it would be more costly to run the system but potentially when you offset that against the cost of installing a heat pump system versus installing the electric rads which I could pretty much do myself um, you know it might make financial sense overall to do to do that instead um, I think you know I'd rather get I'd rather buy electric rads uh, and then spend the difference buying a monster battery to put in the house that I can charge up from the grid at night time and then use that energy to run the rads during the day to, to keep the costs down um, because then at least in the summer months when you're not using the rads at all that big battery you know can have a, a, an additional use an additional purpose that you can use it for so yeah, these are all things I need to consider, um, uh, but ideally, yeah, we'd like to get all that done and then have the gas disconnected uh, entirely so we'd save on the standing charge um, for not being connected to mains gas anymore. So that's one thing that's going on. Um, another thing I'm trying to decide about is um, uh, what to do next in terms of projects. So um, I've tried to decide whether or not to um, build a new battery using um, these prismatic cells that you can get um, now from China. These are lithium iron phosphate cells, so much safer, but they've come down in price enormously and you can, you can build a 48 volt uh, 16S uh, battery out of, out of those. Uh, for around the same price as um, about one and a half of those pylon tech batteries that I have in the house um, but obviously uh, because of the size of them you, you, you get about three times the storage capacity of one of the pylon tech batteries so I'm considering whether it's worth doing a little project with that um, also I've got uh, an e-bike which I built myself um, I didn't film that unfortunately for my channel but um, my wife doesn't have one and when we go out cycling together I find it easy to go up hills 
and she has to really struggle because she doesn't have any assistance. So I've been considering whether or not to build her an e-bike um, from scratch and that would obviously be something that I could put on my channel. So um, I've got an idea where, whether or not to um, maybe do something along those lines. Um, also considering the possibility of adding some more solar to the house. There's a, um, a long stretch of roof uh, above my front door which is south facing. It's um, uh, just below the main roof that, that my main solar panels are on. Um, and I'm pretty sure I can probably fit a kilowatt of panels on there. Um, so yeah, I'm considering whether or not to try and test fit some rails on there. It's limited space but I think I could probably do it uh, and see if I could maybe fit another kilowatt of panels on there. So that's something else I'm considering uh, as, a, as a future project. Uh, I've also been considering whether or not to um, put together a small uh, off-grid solar, uh, solar power plant for my parents house. They've got a, a flat roof on sort of an outside shed outbuilding in their garden that um, is, is ideal to put some uh, solar panels on and then I could put a small off-grid inverter in there and just use that to uh, run some of the main loads in their house to so just you know reduce, help to reduce their electricity bill a bit so um, again another, another idea that I'm considering uh, doing in terms of projects. Uh, as far as my um, my software system goes, my home automation and power usage system, Monocle, um, it's working um, just fine at the moment. I've been tweaking it here and there and uh, adding a few small features, but nothing major. But I'm considering whether or not it might be worth um, overhauling it to work with something like the Octopus Agile tariff so that um, if I ever go on to Octopus Agile and um, you, you, you get the half hourly prices a day in advance I could make it work with that, download those automatically and calculate okay you know at this particular hour the price is going to go down to one pence a kilowatt hour or something so I'm just going to switch everything on and charge everything up because you know that's really cheap or you know potentially if it went um, negative have it switch everything on and just and just charge everything up to make money um, I could potentially also make it work with um, their uh, export pricing system as well so that you could actually um, dump all of your power that you've got stored out onto the grid uh, at times when the export pricing is higher so um, my monocle system uses a system of rules which you can configure and so I would I would want to modify it in such a way that I could create new types of rules that involve uh, maximum minimum price and things like that so um, I think that would be quite an interesting uh, piece of work to do uh, but uh, probably be quite time consuming and I'd obviously have to um, transition on to the Agile tariff while I was working on it so I could actually test it out probably but I think the winter months is probably the best time to do that because that tends to be when the winds blowing the most and the Agile prices tend to plunge down to the lowest levels so yeah again something else that I'm considering so another battery type project I was considering is we currently have our Nissan Leaf, it's an original Nissan Leaf, it's only got the 24 kilowatt hour battery and currently it will still do 75 miles or so on a full charge. We've, we've lost one capacity bar but um, you know, it has done 80,000 miles or so now so uh, it's doing well. Um, but I've been considering whether or not to have um, the battery replaced with one of the bigger 40 kilowatt hour packs from the new Leafs because they're exactly the same size and shape uh, you can just literally have one swapped over there's a company um, I'll try and leave a link in the description um, there's a company somewhere here in the UK that will do the battery swap for you and uh, I think it costs somewhere around sort of six six thousand pounds or something um, 
uh, and that would then give us a 40 kilowatt hour pack in the car and so it would probably then do around 150 miles or so um, which um, would would be you know a significant upgrade but you also get to keep the old battery if you want it so I could I could have that done and then bring the old battery back and make a video about disassembling it uh, and getting the um, lithium ion packs uh, out of it and then build um, a new battery for the shed uh, out of those old Nissan Leaf battery packs and that would probably be still around 20 kilowatt hours or so in the pack maybe a bit less than that um, but uh, yeah, that would be quite an interesting project and, and I think probably something uh, people might be interested in watching. So uh, that's another idea I've been having. Uh, I'd also like to get a small wind turbine in the garden somewhere. Um, I'm not sure where, I'm not sure uh, if um, according to planning permission there's actually anywhere in my garden I could physically put one without getting prior planning approval because I don't believe I can get it far enough away from any one of my boundaries for it to fall into that category um, and I don't want to mount it on the house itself because it would be pointless the, the wind's just too turbulent up there by the roof and you're just not going to get anything so really it needs to be somewhere quite high in the garden um, but I'm not sure I'd be allowed to do it and I'm not sure whether it would really be worth it because my experience of watching videos of people doing this on YouTube is they don't really generate that much for for the amount of money they cost to buy so um, as much as I'd like to have one I just don't know whether it would really make sense it's probably better off spending the money on more solar panels but uh, the good thing about having a wind turbine, I mean, especially if you could get one that works, even if it's only generating a steady 400 watts, is it'll generate that through the night, and that's you know that's going to be enough to run the sort of baseline loads in the house 24/7. So um, yeah, I'd like to get one just to play around with it, but it's just whether or not it would really work. Uh, one other thing we've been considering. is um, whether or not to go for a three-phase supply into the house. Um, I've been thinking about it for a while and um, in the winter months when I'm going to be using the four hours of cheap rate electricity that's available on the Octopus Go tariff um, or if I go to the uh, Octopus Agile tariff and uh, you know you get um, negative pricing for an hour or something, um, I'm going to want to like pull in as much as possible to charge the batteries and the cars and everything else and heat the hot water all at the same time. So if I'm going to do that, I could very easily at the moment overload my um, incoming uh, line, uh, the main fuse, I think. So um, I've been considering whether it would be worth having a three-phase supply fitted because that would also give me the option to um, potentially add more solar as well in the future because um, it's based on how many, f you know, how much you could potentially push out per phase so at the moment I'm limited because um, I'm on a single phase uh, they probably won't let me have any more solar capacity but if I was on a three phase supply then uh, I could have more um, and also if we're going for electric oven with electric hob and we've got the two car chargers and uh, we potentially might be running electric heating and all the rest of it in the winter we I think we could probably be getting very close to the line so uh, it might be worth uh, getting three phase uh, put into the house and um, I, I originally looked into it a little bit to, to get some rough ideas of cost um, I think I think you're looking at at least several thousand pounds and I think that's if you dig the trench yourself uh, if you're gonna get someone else to come and dig the trench um, then yeah you're probably gonna add another thousand onto that or something but again it, it might be something that's worth it um, 
but we'd obviously have to have a whole new uh, distribution board uh, consumer unit put in the house. We'd need a three phase one instead of a single phase one. Um, and that would require enlarging the hole where it is because at the moment it's um, sort of in a cavity in the wall uh, and it's only big enough for you know the, the, the consumer unit as it stands but a three phase consumer unit is, is much bigger so you'd have to take s several more rows of bricks out to, to fit the bigger unit in the wall. Uh, I don't think that would really be a problem but um, it was, it's just something to consider. Um, so yeah, that's another thing that's potentially on the cards I need to give some thought to. Um, obviously with three phase, it obviously means we could also then have a three phase car charger. So if you've got a compatible car, like a Tesla or something, um, you can potentially charge it up to 22 kilowatts uh, instead of just a uh, maximum of seven. Um, and speaking of cars, yeah, I just got back from the, uh, from Farnborough, from the British uh, motor show and uh, there was a hall there with a load of EVs in it so I uh, had a had a chance to have a look at the new uh, Hyundai Ioniq 5 which uh, looks really nice from the outside but actually when I sat in it wasn't really taken back with the interior I prefer the um, Kia EV6 I think it I think it just looks a bit nicer on the inside but they're basically the same uh, powertrain and battery technology and stuff underneath so if I had to buy one of the two I think I'd probably go for the EV6 I think it's just a little bit nicer uh, on the inside but I, I do like the exterior of the Ionic 5 but, but yeah just not so keen on the interior I also had a chance to have a look at the uh, Skoda ENIAC and uh, really like that that's um, really nice nice interior nice exterior and just uh, really generally all round nice looking EV, um, be a good replacement for our Mitsubishi PHEV but um, uh, probably n not the car I would get but it, it is nice of all the cars of that of that style like the ID4 and etc I think I think it's probably the nicest looking one so what are your thoughts on on uh, a lot of the sort of ideas for projects I've just mentioned? Which which would you most like to see uh, on my channel? You know, m more solar being put in or a new battery project or um, having three phase put in the house or um, uh, getting the heating systems replaced with uh, an electric equivalent or um, you know, all of those things. I mean, or, or building an e-bike, for example. Which, which would, which, which would you most like to see uh, on the channel, and um, and why? You know, uh, please, yeah, leave your comments about it in the comment section below, and I'll uh, try and read through those and see uh, if that gives me any kind of a nudge in any particular direction of what to do next. So, uh, yeah, that's it. Please like, comment, share, subscribe and I'll see you on the next video.